I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I'm delighted to be with you another day, another study, as God continues to take us to another level. So here we grow again, not, not here we go again, but here we grow again in God's word. So brothers and sisters, one thing I want to mention before I start to get into the lesson is don't forget uh, daylight savings time on Sunday uh, so that sisters and brothers can make it to church on time. Daylight savings time will be Sunday, um, March the 14th. So don't forget that. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you. Heavenly Father, we know that it's not by might nor by power, but by your spirit, says the Lord. Heavenly Father, we realize that you are a shepherd and because you are a shepherd, we shall not want. We shall not want for anything, O oh God. And although we go through storms, you will always make a way. Heavenly Father, I pray that you bless this radio broadcast. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the listeners. Deal with them in that situation, O oh Heavenly Father. For many are going through ups and downs, but we know that you are a God that can deal with heavy burdens. You said in your word, come unto me. All who are laden and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I'm meek and lowly, and you shall find rest for your soul. So, Heavenly Father, I pray, O oh God, that you take our burdens, O oh God. Let us cast our cares upon you, for we realize that you do care for us, O oh Lord. Heavenly Father, let the people know that it's not about me, but it's all about you. You increase as I decrease. We thank you that the devil is defeated. You, O oh God, are exalted in Jesus Christ as Lord. Heavenly Father, bring back the education and the study back to my mind, O oh God, as I deliver this message to your people, O oh God. We love you, but we must admit that you first loved us. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray in the church said, amen, amen, amen. To start off, you don't have to go that far. Let's go to Genesis, Genesis chapter one. Genesis chapter one. I'm so excited. I, I pray that someone is is is, 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 is is taken to another level on today with this study right here. And Sterling Boulevard also is starting our Wednesday night Bible class tonight. So for those who want to hear part two of this at 530, please, please, please feel free to come to Sterling Boulevard, 218 Sterling Boulevard tonight at 530 uh, to hear part two of this. In the beginning, God created heaven and earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And God said, let there be light. Light. For a brief moment, I just want to teach from a subject, and it's simply this. Listen to the wind. Listen to the wind. Now, if what I just said has nothing to do with what I just read, I need you to get on the bus. We may take a turn. We may even have a stop light or two. But if you stay on the bus, when we come to a complete stop, it would all make sense. Even the late great Ray Charles would be able to see it and Stevie wouldn't have to wonder. Stay on the bus. Listen to the wind. Now, in the first three verses of Genesis, we see the Godhead. Verse number one, and God created heaven and earth, Elohim. Verse number two, and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of God. The Ruah, the Ruah of God. And verse number three, we have the Son. We have God the Father. We have God the Son. And we have God the Holy Spirit. Some people are saying, where, where is the Son in verse number three? And God said, whenever God says something, it is the Word. According to John chapter one, verse one, in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the word was God. Not only was he the word, but Jesus was the light. John chapter 8 verse 12, Jesus said this to the people. And I am the light of the world. So we got God the Father. We got God the Son. And we have God the Holy Spirit. But I want to deal with the wind on today. 
Listen to the wind. The word spirit comes from the Hebrew word ruah. Ruah means the breath or the wind of God. The wind of God. Now the word ruah, the meaning also means the wind follows a prescribed path. Oh, this is going to get good, y'all. I want y'all to listen to me now. The wind follows a preordained or a prescribed path. So the wind will always lead you where God needs you to be if you listen to the wind. To listen to the wind of God is to listen to the word of God because the word Torah means the word of God follows a prescribed path. So you have the wind of God follows a prescribed path and you have the word of God follows a prescribed path. So wherever you see the wind of God, you will see the word of God. Oh man, glory, hallelujah. I don't, I don't want to take y'all too fast, but I want to get, I want you to get this. So if anybody is saying God told me to do something, the wind has to line up with the word. You see preachers sometimes say, God just told me everybody got to give a thousand dollars this Sunday. Let me tell you, the wind has to line up with the word of God. If the wind follows a prescribed path and the word follows a prescribed path, if we're going to speak, let every man speak the oracles of God. The Bible tells us if any man speak, let him speak the word of God. Why? Because the word of God follows a prescribed path and the wind or the spirit of God follows a prescribed path. And they are always lined up together. And that's why you see Jesus. Jesus said, the words I speak unto you are not my words, but the father who sent me. Jesus was walking in the spirit. So whenever Jesus spoke or spake to the people, his word lined up with the word of God, his father. So I want to deal with, listen to the wind on this morning. Ruah, it means the wind follows a prescribed path. And the reason I want to explain is my dearly beloved, because in the generation we're living in, many people are getting the Holy Spirit mixed up with emotionalism. Uh, the music get the playing and the drums get the beating and, 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 and the pastor get the shouting and say a whole lot of emotional stuff. But when the people get home, it never edifies them because emotionalism cannot sustain you like the true word of God. And if you don't understand how the Holy Spirit of God works, you will be pulled into the religion of emotionalism, thinking that God is saying something to you, but it has no foundation because it's not rooted in the word of God. So I want to deal with this morning, my dearly beloved, listen, listen to the wind. Now in the Old Testament, God is doing most of the work. We know that God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit all came together in the creation of the world and also the creation of man. Genesis 1 verse 26 said, and God said, let us, wait now, if there's no man created, then who is God talking to? And he said, let us, God the Father. God the Son and God the Holy Spirit, the three are there having a conversation in the creation of mankind. He said, hey, since we have made creation, let's make man. So you got God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit. So let's talk about the Spirit. Okay, the Spirit takes things and takes people who are out of position and puts them in position. That's the function of the Spirit. Anything that is out of order... Any person that is out of order, it would take that thing or that person and help them get in order. Look at verse number two. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. Watch this now. Glory. Hallelujah. And the spirit of God moved or hoovered over the face of of the water. Now that word hoover gives you the analogy of a bird. And another thing that the scripture uh, 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 gives you a metaphor of the spirit is a dove, is a dove. So now we see that metaphoric language of a bird hoovering over something that is out of order to put it in order. So now I want you to go to Psalms 104 with me. Go to Psalms 104. David describes the spirit. Now I want to tell you that the function of the spirit stays the same, but how the spirit was used and who was allowed to be used by the spirit in the old testament to the new testament that differs the function never differs 
but who received it, that differs from the Old Testament and the New Testament. The Old Testament, only the kings and the prophets and those anointed men of God were used by the Spirit. He told Adam, if you disobey me, then you should surely die. To not have the Spirit of God to, is to be dead. So only the anointed kings, priests, and prophets were able to contain this anointing. And that's why David said, please do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Look at Psalms 104, verse 29 and 30. Look what he says. You hide your face. And the people are troubled. He said, whenever you hide your face, oh God, without your face, we are troubled. Watch this now. If you take away your spirit, they die and they return to the dust. Look what he say now. When God takes his spirit away from us, we die. So to live without the spirit of God is to be dead to God. Look what he goes on to say, verse number 30. You send forth your spirit and things are created. Oh, glory. So things that are out of order, when your spirit comes in that place, it takes things that are out of order and puts them in order. That's why I don't understand when somebody say, Pastor Gil, I can't come to church until I get my life right. I'm still selling drugs. I'm still drinking. I'm still smoking. Let me tell you, you cannot get yourself in order without the spirit of God. So not, it's not to run from the spirit of God. Uh, you should run towards the spirit of God because the main function of the spirit of God is to take people that are out of order or things that are out of order and put them in order. Listen. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Listen to the wind. Look what it says in verse number 30. You send forth your spirit and things are created. Heaven and earth and mountains and rivers and, and the firmament. Things are created. Watch this now. Thou renewest the face of the earth. He said, wherever your spirit is, you renew the face of the earth. God's spirit takes things that are out of order glory and he puts those things in order so if any individual is planning on getting their life right you cannot get your life right outside of the wind <laughs> outside of the wind and this is why Jesus told this is why Jesus told Nicodemus in John chapter 3 verse 5 and Jesus answered him verily verily I say unto thee Except a man be born of the water and the spirit, he cannot enter into everlasting life. Without the spirit is death. With the spirit brings everlasting life. Let me say that again. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except the man be put together by water and the spirit, he cannot enter into everlasting life. Now, this water represents the word of God and the word represents baptism. Ephesians 5, 26 says, Christ loved the church and gave himself for it that he might sanctify and cleanse it by the washing of water by the word. Oh, y'all didn't catch that. Christ loved the church and gave himself for it that he may sanctify or, or, or make it holy, Holy Spirit, or make it holy, sanctify and cleanse it by the washing of water by the word. Now, I want to also show you this, that the indwelling of the spirit inside of believers was prophesied about in the Old Testament. I want you to get this now. In the Old Testament, everybody did not have the spirit of God on the inside of them. The spirit of God dwelt in a temple. You remember that? When God told the people to build a temple and above the Ark of the Covenant was the Spirit of God. Because the Spirit of God did not dwell in everybody or certain anointed individuals who had the ability to have the Spirit of God. Remember the Spirit of God got taken away from Saul and it was given to David. So now that we are baptized under the name of Jesus Christ, our bodies become the temple and the Spirit is now indwelled in our physical bodies and not a physical building. See, for years, people thought the church building was the church, but the word church means ecclesia. It means the called out people. God called people out of the world and he put his spirit on the inside of them. So wherever people with the spirit of God goes, the church goes. And that's why he said, with two or three join together, I'll be the God in the midst because the spirit is now indwelling within our 
our physical bodies. Let's go to Ezekiel 36. I want you to see some, my, my, my sisters and brothers. Ezekiel 36, the spirit was prophesied about that it will be indwelled inside people and no longer just the temple. Ezekiel 36, verse number 25. Even baptism was prophesied about in verse number 25. Look what the word of God says. Then will I sprinkle or pour clean water upon them and you shall be clean from all your filthiness. Be baptized, repent, be baptized, every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, and you shall be forgiven for all your sins. Look at this now. Then I will sprinkle or pour clean water upon you, and you shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idol gods. Will I cleanse you? Watch this in verse number 26. If you're going to prophesy about the, the wind, the, the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, and I will give you a new heart also, and I will give you a new ruah. Spirit, wind, breath. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to take that heart that's out of order. Glory, hallelujah. I hope y'all get this. I'm going to take that worldly heart that's out of order. And when I give you my spirit, it's going to help you get that ugly heart that's out of order to put in order because the, the darkness was up on the face of the deep. Everything was out of order until the spirit of God came. And when the spirit of God came, it took things that were out of order and put them in order. So I can't get myself in order unless I get the win. I need the win. I need the win. I need the win. And a new heart also will I give you and a new ruah or new spirit will I put within you. And I will take your stony heart out of your flesh and I will give you a heart of flesh. Watch this now. And I will put my spirit within you. Watch this. And cause you to walk in my word. Oh, there it is. The word of God follows a prescribed path. And the wind of God follows a prescribed path. So that's how it takes something that's out of order because the word of God helps us get in order. Watch this now. And I will put my spirit within you and the spirit will cause that word in Hebrew mean sometime it would make. I seen a piece of paper flying down the road just just a couple of weeks ago and it, it, it brought back to my mind that that paper could not stop the wind from making it go exactly where the wind wanted it to go. And this is the same thing Ezekiel is saying. Sometimes God has to turn up the wind to push you into the area or the arena that God needs you to be. That's why certain things can happen in your life that you never prayed for because the wind will cause you to walk in the way of God. And that's why he said, uh, 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 in Romans that the spirit will make intercession for us through our groaning, which cannot be uttered. So the spirit will take what we're trying to say to God and give it to God as long as it lined up with the will, because the Torah keeps you in the will of God and the wind keeps you in the will of God. So the only thing that is important to God is that the believer listen to the wind because the will of God is the only thing that's important to him. The will of God is the only thing that's important to him. Look, look at this. Look at this again. Now in verse number, verse number 28. And you shall dwell in the land and, and I gave your fathers and you shall be my people and I shall be your God. So in order to be a child of God, you need the spirit. And that's why the Bible tells us in Roman 8, I think it's verse number 9. They that receive the spirit of Christ are his and they that have not received the spirit of Christ do not belong to him. It's the spirit. It's the spirit that makes you a child of God. Uh, 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 Dr. Dr. Temper Longman said this. Here we are reminded that the wind in the region of Palestine is not always cool, gentle or refreshing. Hot wind from the desert may bring crops to ruin, uproot trees, and trace patterns in the field of corn, and the wind also have enough power to drive ships. So not only is the Holy Spirit a comforter and brings us peace, but sometimes God can turn the wind up and we can be a tornado. And that's when God has to chastise us as believers. He can turn the wind up sometimes. He can sometimes turn the wind up. It's not just a gentle wind. Sometimes that wind can be a tempest that causes a storm on the sea. Let's go to Matthew. Go to Matthew chapter 4 real quick. I want you to see something that the Spirit will sometimes not just be gentle, but it'll be a powerful wind that'll lead you 
uh, uh, to be tried that you may grow as a believer. That you may grow as a believer. Look at Matthew chapter 4 verse 1. Then was Jesus led of the what? Spirit. Now we have make it, made it to the New Testament so that spirit, that word ruah, it has been translated from Hebrew to Greek. Now we find the word pneuma. Numa, same same word, but translated to gr Greek now. So now Jesus was led by the Numa of God into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Watch this now. When he had fasted forty days and forty night, he was at the word a hunger. And when the tempter came unto him, he said, "If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread." And Jesus answered and said unto him, "For it is written." There it is. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Wherever the spirit is, the word is there. Because the word follows a prescribed path and the wind follows a prescribed path. And Jesus was walking in the spirit. That's why the Bible say walk ye in the spirit so you would not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary one to the other. So you would not be able to do the things that God is needing you to do. The wind follows a prescribed path and the word follows a prescribed path. So when God tells us to walk in the spirit, it means to walk in the word. Anything outside of that is going to lead you in the path of unrighteous. That's why Jesus said, uh, the, uh, David said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He lead me in the path of right. That's all, that's all God is concerned about, that you stay on the path. That's all God is concerned about, that you stay on the path. Look at Romans 14. I want you to see this. Romans 8, I mean, Romans 8, verse 14. Romans chapter 8, verse 14. Okay, hey, amen. I got nine more minutes. Like I said, part two will be on tonight for those who are really being edified on today. And they, a lot of people wonder why we preach baptism so much, because now that you see within scripture, you need the spirit. You need the spirit. Outside of that, you're just going to be caught in emotionalism for 40 years in the church and not know that emotionalism and the spirit is two different things, two different things. Look at the word of God says in Romans 8, 14, Romans 8, 14, for as many as are led by the pneuma, the spirit, the ruah of God, they are sons of God. He never said as many people go to church are the sons of God. He never said as many people sing in the choir are sons of God. He never said, I had a sister a couple weeks ago. She said, I've never been baptized for remission of my sin. I just always been an usher in the church and I always went to church. I said, sister, you're going to need the spirit. You're going to need the spirit because where the spirit is, there's freedom and liberty. For as many that are led by the pneuma of God, they are sons of God. Those are the saved people. Those who have his spirit. Even though we disobey him sometimes, you have the spirit. And that's why he has to turn the wind up sometime to get us to walk in his way. That's where the conviction comes from. When God has to turn up the wind, he has to turn up the wind. Look what it goes on to say in verse number 15. For you have not received the pneuma of bondage, like the Old Testament, again to fear. But you have received the pneuma of adoption. That means God adopted us. He took us out of the world because we was out of order. And he brought us into this adoption agency where he's putting us in order. Whereby we cry, Abba Father. Since we have the spirit, we have the ability to call God our father now. Look at verse number 16. The spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. My God. Oh, I want y'all to see this. I want y'all to see this. Uh, John 14, 16. Y'all got to see this. Y'all got to see this. Oh, man. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you so much, Holy Spirit. Look at John 14. Look at John 14. I want you to see some. In John 14... Not only is the Holy Spirit our comforter and our helper, but look what it says in John 14, verse 16. And the word of God says, I will pray the Father and he shall give you another advocate that he may abide with you. How long? Forever. That's why the Bible say, and the spirit returns to the God that gave it and the flesh goes back to the dust. 
So watch this now. And he will give you an advocate. Now I got to explain that word advocate. I got to explain that word advocate. That the Greek word advocate means paracletus. It comes from the Greek word paracletus. And when you look at that word in English, it means paraclete. Now you're dealing with two words. Para means beside. Cleat means a friend who walks beside you and tells you the truth. Mm. <laughs> Jesus said not only is he your comforter, but he's a friend that will walk with you. And no matter how mad you get, he's going to tell you the truth. He's going to tell you the truth. The word paraclete is the word advocate, paracletus. It means to walk beside a friend who would tell you the unadulterated truth, no matter how it hurts your feelings. And we all need somebody that's going. And that's why Jesus said, look at, look at, look at John 15, 15. John 15, 15. Henceforth, I do not call you slaves or servants. For a servant does not know what his Lord is doing, but I call you friend. For all things I have heard of my father, I have made known to you. He said, I'm not calling you a slave that you're, you're living in a spirit of bondage like they did in the Old Testament. I'm calling you a friend because I'm going to walk with you forever. And no matter how it rubs you the wrong way, I'm going to tell you the truth. That's why the Bible says a wise man will receive correction, but a foolish man will despise wisdom. Oh, man. Oh, man. In closing, go to 1 John. Lord, thank you so much. Oh, Lord, thank you so much. It's, it's amazing how the Word of God lines up when we are being taught by the Holy Spirit the correct way. Go to 1 John at the back of, the, at the back of your Bibles. 1 John. Hey, Amen. I hope the people are being edified, and I hope that we continue to grow from faith to faith until we get to the level of confidence. Faith is believing God. Confidence is knowing what God is going to do. We want to move from faith to faith until we get to the arena of confidence. Look look at look at look at 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2. And look what the word of God says in verse number 27. And we're going to we're going to close with this right here. But the anointing which you have received or the Holy Spirit which you have received it abides in you and you need not that any man shall teach you, but as the same anointing teaches you all things. Why? Because it's a friend. And he teaches you the truth. And it's no lie. Even as you have been taught, you shall abide in him. He said, when I rub you the wrong way, don't stop walking with me. He said, I need you to keep abiding with me. When I, when I, when you hear the, when you hear the truth of the preaching of the word of God and it, and it, and it pinches you, I'm pinching you because you're a friend. And I'm going to tell you the truth. He said, I want you to continue to abide in me. Don't, don't get rubbed the wrong way and stop coming to church. Because of the, the anointing, which is the Holy Spirit, is also an advocate, which is a friend that walks with you and tells you the truth. The truth is what makes you free. Why do you think he said that? Because the Holy Spirit is not just a comforter. It, 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 it does not only just bring peace. It's not just a counselor. It's not just an a advocate. It's a, it's a friend. Look what it says. But the anointing which you have received. Repent, be baptized. Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ. And you shall receive, receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. It abided in you and you need not any man to teach you. See, in the Old Testament, when they were under the law of Moses, you needed somebody to tell you when you, you disobeyed. Thou should not lie. Thou should not steal. Hey, you know you stole today. Hey, you know you lied today. You needed somebody to tell you because they didn't have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. So he said, once you have the Holy Spirit and you start studying the word of God, you don't need nobody to tell you when you're wrong because that friend, which is the Holy Spirit, is going to tell you when you're wrong. That's why when I see people in a church that can treat anybody any kind of way and don't feel bad about it, two things come to mind. Either you have disobeyed God so long where he has made you over to a reprobate mind or you never were saved the right way in the beginning. Let me say that again. When I see different sisters and brothers that can carry themselves any kind of way and mistreat people with no conviction, never come back and say that I'm sorry. Two things come to my mind. Either you have disobeyed God for so many years where he has allowed you to think that you're right when you're wrong, or you never got saved the right way in the beginning because the advocate, which is the Holy Spirit, is a friend that's going to tell you the truth. And you really can't rest well at night until you submit and repent and tell the truth. So you need to listen to the wind. 
Listen to the wind. Listen to the wind. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. God did the most work in the Old Testament. Jesus did most of the work in the New Testament. And now that Jesus seated at the right hand of God, guess who we're living with? We're living in the days of the Holy Spirit. The book of Acts chapter 2 said, In the last day I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young man shall see dreams. Your old man, your young man shall see vision. Your old man shall dream dreams. So now we're living in the days of the Holy Spirit. God the Father is in heaven. God the Son is at the right hand. The only person we have is the person of the Holy Spirit down here on earth with us. And you need him. So repent. Be baptized. Every one of you. In the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sin and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And that Holy Spirit will take something that's out of order and he'll help you get better. One day at a time, one prayer at a time, one study at a time, one conviction at a time, one chastisement at a time. He'll help you become better. You need the Holy Spirit. Why don't you come worship with us on Sunday morning at 10 a.m. And why don't you come worship with us Tuesday night, I mean Wednesday night at at 5.30 p.m. Thank you so much.